Oh, it's up, guys. Harley Rocks here from Rock 104. Cool. With Sebastian Bach. Oh, my Ooh. God. And you're in yeah. Reno. You're in Reno, right? Yeah. I'm right down the street. Vegas, right? That's right. Yeah. I'll actually be down there for my birthday weekend, beginning of May. Wow. Mine is beginning of April. So Nice. Yeah. I'm I older than you, though, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I got a big one this year, though. So, what? How old are you? I'll be forty. Well, all right. <laughs> I'll be fifty-six. Nice, cool, cool. Yeah, this is like such a trip because I mean, I remember growing up listening to you and Skid Row, and cool. you know, I hear the music a lot because my fiance happens to be in a tribute band. Oh wow! And he plays you. <laughs> oh wow that's wild i know so cool so i got i want to get into some stuff what in the first place made you want to get into music um well this is in my book the first thing that made me want to get into music was buying kiss posters and nice. because my friend dixon asked me to join the church choir and um, and then he said, if you join, you get a stipend and I get two bucks or something like that. <laughs> like, like for every guy he got in the choir, he got like a dollar or two. Like we were eight years old. Yeah. And I, 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 I go, what is a stipend? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, that's money you're going to get every month to sing in the choir and I was on my bike and I turned around and I go, I said to myself, someone's going to pay me to sing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I go, how much? I said that eight years old. I go, how much? And he goes, well, it's like, it's like $2 a month just to, to start. It was 1976. We were eight years old. And kiss posters were like a dollar seventy-five at the local variety store. That's what we called them in Canada, variety stores. It was called um, Westmount, I think. I, I can't. It's hard for me to remember the name of the store. One was called Parkway Variety, but they and one was called Hatton's Funhouse. They sold all rock magazines. And in 1976, obviously, there was no internet or anything. I lived in a town called Cavan, Ontario, which had three channels. I'm not making this up. This is true. <laughs> oh, and we man. lived, it was like near where Neil Young grew up. Like I could ride my bike to the town Omimi, which is where Neil Young wrote the song, um, Helpless. There is a town in North Ontario. But, um, so uh, I go, oh my God, I can't believe this. I can buy a new kiss poster every month. Even though back then when you're that young, a month is like a year. Oh, so, totally. okay. so that's what, so I rode down there with him to the church and the choir master, uh, made me stand next to the piano and went up the scale and my voice didn't stop. I, I had, I could go really high, man. And so he goes, you're in, you're in the choir. <laughs> that was it. There's the answer to your question. <laughs> That's awesome. So aside from kiss, like who would you say are some of your influences? Well, before kiss, it was Elton John because my dad and mom used to play Elton John's greatest hits in the car. And to me, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting was, was the heaviest thing I heard up to that point. But uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix, too, they played that all the time. And I got into uh, Rush. Ooh. And then Cheap Trick, which was huge in my town in Canada when I was a kid. And then Van Halen, my babysitter, brought over Van Halen one, Ooh. right right when it came out, and I could I looked at the cover, David Lee Roth, like 
bending over backwards. <laughs> and I go, they looked so dirty to me. Because <laughs> Cheap Trick was out with like Dream Police and they were in all white clothing. And Robin Zander always looked so classy. He always was wearing like a jacket or, a, you know, something very high end class. He always looked perfect. David Lee Roth looked like he was crazy and wild and nuts and fucking. I was like, these guys are wild. Like, <laughs> so I asked my babysitter, can I please borrow this record? And she goes, okay, yeah. Carol Ann Heath was her name. Thank you, Carol Ann Heath, wherever you are today. And then her brother actually took me to see Van Halen for the first time on the Fair Warning Tour at oh, Maple Leaf Gardens in 1981. I was, I don't know, 12, 11, no, 12 or 13. And we sat way high up in the rafters, uh, took the subway to the show. So those were good times. By the way, I have a new record out. It's called Child. I know. That's so I go, awesome. off these, I go off on these tangents, you know. Yes, it was, know. it was fun going to see Van Halen in 81. But I have a new record. Yes. And let's talk about that. So I remember seeing that your song, What Do I Got to Lose, dropped. And I'm just like. I was listening and I'm just like, holy crap, this is amazing. Well, like, let's, yeah, thank you. Uh, What's amazing to me is that it's really doing great on FM radio in America. Oh, yeah. Like I'm getting played on all these stations across the country. And I honest to God didn't think that that was possible anymore. I didn't, I didn't know if, I could ever get on the radio again. And it and it and it happened with that song. And it's still happening with that song. So that's incredible to me. That's like, dude, if you got the right song, you can always get on the radio. So yeah, <laughs> I absolutely. just thought because guys, you know, so-called from the 80s or whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. they don't show me another song that's been on <laughs> FM radio from a guy who was touring in 89. Like there's no, there's very few, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's any, like really. Yeah, I mean, sure. I can't think of any, <laughs> but, but somehow I got back in the radio and I don't even know what to say. Like, I feel like a little kid. That's, that's by the way, what the album title references, mm -hmm. Child Within the Man, the fact that rock and roll makes me feel young, like a kid. It does. Good rock and roll. Like, what do I got to lose? When I listen to it, I feel like a little boy. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the title of the record means. It's, 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 we're, we all, all of us, you're turning 40, mm -hmm. I'm turning 100. Uh, but we're all, get, you know, that happens to all of us. But sure. to me, rock and roll is like a magic elixir. Like it's magical. It's, oh, it's, it is. Yeah, it is. But it that's what the, the, the title of the record refers to the album cover, mm -hmm. which is painted by my dad. Oh. Started that, that cover was started in 1978. Wow. And the uh there's me running next to the car on the front of the album and then then my dad did a painting of of me in 91 or 9 1990 of a mm -hmm. circus magazine centerfold and this painting's like 12 feet high and i looked at both these paintings like the one of me on the car has been rolled up since 78 Okay. Whoa. And I unrolled it. Like I get fucking emotional thinking about this. I unrolled it and it was like, I go, oh. like I kind of forgot about it because I haven't seen it since I was a little kid. And I go, this is an album cover. And then my song, 
Everybody Bleeds, which is mm -hmm. the new video, which is the closest to a title track because it has the line, child within the man, I'm screaming it throughout the song. And I kept walking around my house and that line was stuck in my brain, child within the man. And then I looked at that image, I go, you gotta be kidding me. That's, that's <laughs> what the fucking picture is. And then I looked at the picture of me on stage and in my video for everybody bleeds, there's yeah. a funny part at the end where I go, peanut like, <laughs> yeah. butter and chocolate. <laughs> who, who knew? So I go, oh my God, I'm going to put the child within the man on the cover. <laughs> Boom. There's there an album go. cover. <laughs> like if I love I when I first posted that album cover on my Instagram, my Facebook, I was I just stared at it for hours, like with tears in my eyes, because it's me bringing my father's art back to life from the dead. Literally, it's a, literally yeah. an album cover from heaven that's done not by a person who's alive on this earth. And that to me is one of the coolest things that I've ever done in my career is bring that back because the music to me, I mean, I can get into the sound of it and the production and the mastering, but it all, I collect vinyl. As you can see, I got a whole house full of records. Oh, my me favorite, too. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite records are from the seventies, just because of the way they sound, mm -hmm. and that's what I aimed for on "Child Within the Man" is that analog vinyl sound, and I I really did my best to to achieve it, and so did my record company, Raining Phoenix Music. They let me do whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, never, I'll never forget that from them because I can be uh, demanding as an artist. Like if I don't like it, it's not coming out and I don't care yeah. who paid for it or what, what I don't care. Like if, if it's good, it's coming out. Having said that, the new video, Everybody Bleeds, is not a single at radio. It's a video because okay. what have I got to lose is really doing great on the radio. So we didn't want to cannibalize that. So, oh, but yeah. the record company loves metal. And they love, <laughs> they love, they go, dude, we need to do a lyric video. And I go, at first I was like, okay. And then I thought about it. I go, that's boring i go that's too boring <laughs> i go guys i'm sorry but we're going to do the world's first lyric performance video oh what wow. which means <laughs> cool. it's a lyric video but i'm performing lyrics that's awesome because cool. i told them i told them when this came out i go dudes i will do a video for every song on this record if you want me to and the first video what do i got to lose was a huge big budget video it was like a seven day shoot mm -hmm. i spent four days filming that myself i've never spent four days filming any video 18 and life was done in one day for me uh uh oh wow monkey business i think was two days but but this, that what do I got to lose was the longest I ever spent making a rock video. Wow. And, and I think you can tell by watching it, we put a lot of effort into it. Now, Everybody Bleeds, me and, Bruce, me and Bruiser Brody, the guitar player, we got on a morning flight, Las Vegas, <laughs> flew to Phoenix, where the studio is, went straight to the studio from the airport, didn't have no makeup lady, didn't have no hair person or anything. We had all that in the first video. We, we didn't have that on the second yeah. one. So, so we just got there and, and then spent the afternoon shooting it and then got on the flight back home that night. And we made that video in like uh, one day or, you know, 
and and um and I had the concept. Yes, the Maxell TV tape commercial because I always thought I looked like that guy. <laughs> so so I, okay, I go, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be watching it on TV and the band's playing, and I'm like the Maxell tape guy, and the fucking music's blowing my hair back, and then I'm gonna sing and. The comic book is going to be like a comic book with the the balloons like Spider-Man. And there's the video. And then at the end, the album cover appears. And I put it on a record player and start rocking out. <laughs> and they go, okay, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and I love the video. I love it. I, lo I will do a video. Oh, it's fantastic. But having said that, that would be my last choice of a song to go to radio because it's heavy as hell. And I love it. It's mm -hmm. heavy, but it's not a commercial uh, mass appeal tune. And there are huge sounding songs on this record. Yes, there's a ballad, okay? I know my... Nice. <laughs> well, because my... My fans like 18 in Life and I Remember You and Wasted mm -hmm. Time, Quick Saint Jesus and By Your Side. So, yeah. so, uh, and the ballad I wrote with Miles Kennedy, yeah. who I also wrote What Do I Got to Lose with? Mm -hmm. And I have to thank Miles Kennedy from the bottom of my heart for I, I think he must be like, paying me back for the years when he was a kid listening to my music because for him to present me with songs for my new record is the oh, ultimate wow. that's the ultimate way of saying thank you brother uh you know you rocked with me when I was a young kid and now I'm going to rock with you now and 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 I have to thank him because that's just a really, really <laughs> cool thing to do. Thank you, Miles Kennedy. Thank you. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Now you have a tour accompanying your record. Mm -hmm. uh, so I see you're going to be stopping at the Rainbow Bar and Grill for their 52nd anniversary show, yes. which is really cool because I actually got the chance to go there for the first time last month. Well, yeah. The first time in your life? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I was at a at a show with the whiskey and afterwards just headed over because I'm like, I can't miss this and just like so much history. And then I see the flyers, you know, if you're, yeah. you're playing there. Uh, well, the, be the, the, the beautiful thing is, even if you just went there for the first time, you went there and saw exactly what Led Zeppelin saw and Alice Cooper saw and Motley Crue and Skid Row and Van Halen because it's exactly the same. So wow. So you <laughs> saw exactly what I saw when I first went there. And that's, that's the cool. that's the beauty of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. And it really is like a family home to to guys like me. They just treat us incredible they treat my wife and my kids incredible all my friends anybody i bring in there they treat like a million bucks and we are headlining the yeah. 52nd anniversary of the rainbow and this performance is dedicated to michael moglieri who mm -hmm. recently yeah. left us which who was the proprietor of the rainbow who i knew and was always so nice and kind to me and gracious. So that's who the show is dedicated to. And uh, um, it's one of the most rare places in the world to me. Cause I, I came from Toronto, Canada and there was places in Toronto that I hung out at all the time. They're not, there anymore you can't go to them no. they don't exist yeah. the gas works is now like a 7-eleven maple leaf gardens has been turned into a grocery store for real oh, yeah. um <laughs> larry's hideaway oh they're all gone yeah but the rainbow is still there so it's amazing it's incredible it's it's a piece of history and i don't want to 
you know, I can't believe it's still there, actually, because all around it is huge skyscraper buildings going up. But the Rainbow is a restaurant for rock and rollers. And for some, they have, they, they must have been offered millions and billions and trillions of dollars. But they're like, no, nope. we're putting up the Lemmy statue. That's what's happening. Yeah. Sebastian is playing the parking lot. So you can keep your trillions of dollars <laughs> and have some pizza. <laughs> which i actually had it's amazing it is amazing i'm trying <laughs> so to skip good. the pizza right now but yes it is, yes, it is amazing I that. but yeah no i was looking at uh you know all your tour dates coming up i think the closest one is probably the california dates Too well you know not what? coming to reno though but maybe uh maybe in the future you know what's wild <laughs> is that we already have a whole nother we have a whole nother tour booked that is not announced yet. Ah. And on that tour, which is summertime, okay. we are playing Fremont Street in Las Vegas, which I know is six yeah. hours from Reno. Hey, it's a one hour plane ride. Well, there you go. <laughs> Fremont Street is an incredible gig, but you might have a heart attack because it's a thousand degrees and we're <laughs> playing outside in July. Oh, in man. <laughs> I've done it twice. Whoa. Every time we do it, it seems like the whole city shows up. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Really, really cool. So funny story. The first time I actually ever heard of you, you you remember trailer park boys yes hell yeah yeah i remember seeing you on their spinoff movie swearnet i'm like man that dude looks so cool <laughs> that's that? the first time you ever saw me yeah <laughs> wow. oh that was swearnet. what was that like you know working with the guys from trailer park boys they're incredibly talented and i thought that that it was biggest in Canada because it's from Canada and it's yeah. very you can't get much more Canadian than oh, the, way, the, the way they talk and their accents. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my father's from Canada, so right. Well, their trailer park boys is as Canadian as you can get. But then I went to see them live in Los Angeles. And they're just as big around the world, Australia, UK, United States. They're not, they're big internationally, huge. And they're so talented live. Like they're amazing on TV, but on TV, you can shoot it, you know, multiple times until you get it right. Yeah. When you're on stage live, you get one shot. <laughs> and watching those guys do their live show is even more impressive than their TV show because they're so naturally funny and talented on stage. Um, and that blew me away. And, and the crowds that come to see them are huge crowds. And it's mostly like college stoner people, but they're all out of their <laughs> mind laughing so fucking hard oh sorry but uh but i love them and and i hope to do more work with them that's awesome so yeah i do actually i have seen you play live before where which was in houston because i used okay. to live out there yeah. that was i guess 2019 but so me and my fiance had seen you you know we came out with a couple friends and i was like pointing at him because it was his birthday <laughs> But the funny part was, is you kept going on about the hat I was wearing. I'm like, what was the hat? <laughs> I don't know. It was just like some knit hat or something. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> was like, but it was super cool. The thing that, that really struck me was that you wore a Houston Astros t-shirt, wow. you know, repping, repping the home team boys. So thank you for that. <laughs> it was a, I remember that was a World Series night. Yes, it was. And it was in Houston. Yep. 
And I was like, who the fuck is going to come to my show <laughs> when it's the World Series in this town? Oh, yeah, let's play that night. But it yeah. was a great show. It was, oh, it was killer. It was a good yeah. show. And, and was, yeah. we're playing Houston again. Oh, yeah, I did see that on uh, oh, yeah, that June 22nd. June 22nd, Houston. Awesome. awesome. June 22nd, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Sorry. Super cool. And I see also from your tour flyer, you're on social media pretty much everywhere. On social, like, on social face, media? Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, X. You know you're what? even on TikTok, which is, I love TikTok. Well, I got to be honest with you. Uh, I got to be honest with you, Harley Rocks. <laughs> love the name, Harley Thank Rocks. You. Okay. Um, I have to be all, I have a whole team behind me Yeah. With, with this record. And the reason I'm telling you that is because yes, I ruled on a fa rule on Facebook, got over a million followers on there. That's awesome. Super. Uh, I ruled on Twitter and now X, even though I like Twitter way better than X, <laughs> um, I ruled that. Ruled Instagram, got half a million followers oh, on Instagram, which is very good. Um, so I got all those down, but I gotta tell you, Harley Rocks, yes, you all <laughs> lost me at TikTok. Okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand it. Uh -huh. Everybody tells me it's the biggest music platform. <laughs> So I go on there, I go, oh, I gotta get into this. And I just, sure. I don't, I don't, I don't really, it doesn't <laughs> relate to me really. And so, but I have a team of people who run my TikTok page and I haven't yeah. seen my TikTok page since last October. Cause this, this team took over like when my, my song came out in November. And then I gave them all my logins and everything. So, so they're running it. I hope it's cool. I hope it's good. <laughs> it is. For but sure. I love my team. So <laughs> they, I approve everything they put out. So it's cool. But to me, okay. honest to God, the internet now is overwhelming. Like you have to constantly post stuff and to be honest i don't feel like posting stuff all the time i don't <laughs> i don't i don't say oh i gotta post something <laughs> like i don't do I, that's not who i am sure like i post something if it's interesting to me and mm -hmm. and if it looks cool or it sounds cool or it's some important info i don't i don't say it's 9 a.m that's when most people are watching i gotta post something right now ah! <laughs> But honestly, that's how people are now. Yeah, right? yeah, they and, are. And I think it's sure. annoying, you know. That's why I love vinyl records because oh, there's man. no nothing in between you and your music at that point. You don't have to start up your phone and go through your text messages and your emails and your you know your your tasks and your calendar and your reminders and your your finances. Okay, now I got the song. Like, I don't want to deal with all that shit. I want to just get to the song. <laughs> so oh, definitely. Which actually, speaking of vinyl, is your new album going to be available on vinyl? Oh, what? That's got to be the greatest question on the planet Earth. And I'm <laughs> so happy that you asked me that because there are seven different versions of child within the man Ooh. i was asked to choose all the different variants the colors etc so they sent me like this mm -hmm. brochure of like thousands of choices okay <laughs> like it's crazy how many different <laughs> colors you can get of your vinyl so i just read and that's all detailed descriptions. And so I read what, what each one was and they make an eco format of vinyl. It's ECO. That is the highest standard 
sound wise of any vinyl available. So out of the seven variants, I chose three eco versions, the black, the mint green, and the turquoise, Ooh. which match the album cover. cover. <laughs> cool. now, those three oh. versions are the highest quality sound, okay? But then I chose four okay. insanely cool looking color variants. But, and you know, the record company's like, these days there's really not that much difference between the colored versions and the black or the eco. But I, to me, I'm a freak a collector. And if I'm, if I'm choosing what one I'm gonna play, I'm going to play the highest quality sounding one. That's just me, that's why, that's what I'm into. But I also do realize and agree that some of these color variants look amazing. <laughs> so one of them I chose is a crystal clear variant, which you can see through. Uh, one is a gold record, which nice. looks just like a gold record that you put on your wall. So it, it looks just like that. Um, then there's oh, a wow. there's a Coke bottle translucent green that I picked. That's the color of a Coke bottle, oh, which reminds me of the car in the front. And then the last one is the unbelievably... The glow, the glow in the dark edition. Yes. No way. Purchased a glow in the dark version, which means when you That's turn insane. off your lights and you play the album, it glows on your turntable. Man, I would go like so perfect in my room because I have my Victrola mm -hmm. and like. All these lights just hanging on the wall, and my desk has lights under it, too. Right. That sounds super, super sick. And I just got to make this clear here. You can get the Black Eco version now on pre-order. And three of those color versions now are available at the Raining Phoenix Music Store. You can get them now. There's four that you can get now. The other three are going to be distributed to... Um, record stores, independent record stores exclusively, like like Zia Records and Amoeba and um, Newbury Comics and those kinds of stores. Yeah. They're going to get different uh, amounts of the other three versions. So you got to go to the store and find those ones. The, the album comes out May 10th. So mm -hmm. as a collector, I just want... I know there's freaks out there that were are wanting to get all seven, right? So yeah. that, that's that's yeah. what I'm talking to right now. <laughs> you can get four of them right now online, but for mm -hmm. the other three, you got to go to the store and hunt them down. But that's fun. <laughs> that's fun too. Oh, so, always. That's the story. Oh, by the way, we're also <laughs> releasing it on CD with a 29 page CD booklet that I designed. That the packaging. Ooh. Packaging of the CD is different than the vinyl because vinyl is so big, you know? So I picked different pictures and stuff for the vinyl because it's larger format. And unbelievably, uh -huh. unbelievably, we are releasing Child Within the Man on cassette in 2024. <gasps> it's coming out on cassette. And I'm actually going to go awesome. get, I'm going to go get a boom box uh, that plays cassettes. And I'm going to show my kids how you can record on blank cassettes and all this. And, and then I'm going to oh, uh, listen to my cool. new record on cassette. That's, that's crazy, but <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Collecting. Collecting's fun. Definitely. Yeah. I just recently got a cassette tape that, uh, you did? Banded release. Oh, I thought it edition. It was the, yeah. <laughs> I thought you said you, so, you got it. I thought you said you got a cassette player because I know oh, I know not, lots of cassettes are coming out one. now, but I don't know too many people yeah. that have a cassette player right now. They I'm have them on one. Amazon, so oh, I gotta right. get one. Somebody <laughs> might have them. 
But yeah, no, it's been such a blast talking to you. Oh my God. Thank you, Harley. Yeah, no problem. Really Hoping at some it. point, maybe you'll come play like a casino show in Reno. So, well, you know, I got to I got to give a shout out to the Reno fans who came to the last show I did in Reno, which was during the Omnicrom uh, virus time. And it was a, oh, scary, it was a scary time to be touring. It was like December 2021. Ooh. And, you know, this was, they were putting the mask mandates back into effect and all this, mm -hmm. and everybody was scared. We get to Reno. I can't remember the name of the venue, but we drove all night through the snow. It was crazy getting there. <laughs> the promoter was like, I don't want to do the show. It's, it's too, everybody's sick. Everybody's sick. And, I, and we told them, hey, man. We just fucking drove here. We're doing the fucking show. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, so we were like, oh. Reno, Reno, whether you like it or not, we're playing tonight, man. And we did. And it ended up being a pretty great show. Like people awesome. came. I remember yeah. it was hot and sweaty. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the name of the place, but I want to play. Uh, I wanna Virginia play. Street Brew House. Is that it? <laughs> Over on in downtown, yeah. I want to thank all the fans who came that night to the Virginia Street Brew House and ignored the news, ignored, <laughs> you know, what people were doing that night. And you all came out mm -hmm. and made it a fun, cool show. So thank you for that, Reno Rock and Rollers. I'm not going to forget that. And I hope to get back to Reno um, this summer. Because if we're playing Vegas, Fremont, mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty close. And if we don't get to Reno, come to Vegas, Fremont, yeah. <laughs> right down the street. All right? Cool. Definitely. Right but thank you so much for taking the time. Um, you know, you thank can find you. you on social media, your website, yep. YouTube. Me and my team. Me and my team. Yep. <laughs> team Baz. Thank yes. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank you it. again so much. Great talking to you. <laughs> you too. Have a great enjoy day. Enjoy the new video. Everybody, yes. please enjoy it. Enjoy the new song. What do I got to lose? And we're going to make at least two more videos before the record even comes out. So sweet. So get ready, Rob. Looking Thank forward you. to it. All right. <laughs> Appreciate it.